What happens when a population becomes so low it's endangered of going extinct? As in dying out forever. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to ride into the endangered zone. Endangered species are species that are at risk of going extinct in the near future. And extinction is of course when there are no living members of any individual of a particular species. Dinosaurs are a flashy example. There's no surviving members of any dinosaur species, unlike the Jurassic Park movies that they are featured in as they seem to be alive and well. But sadly, there's many modern examples, including the great auk, the passenger pigeon, and the dodo, all of which are extinct. So what's happening? What is causing species to go extinct? Let's start with the biggest reason, habitat loss. At the end of the 19th century, the Everglades covered most of the southern tip of Florida. Sawgrass, prairies, and other wetland ecosystems stretched from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up to Lake Okeechobee. But by 1900, millions of acres of this precious ecosystem was being drained for agriculture and development. Today, less than half of the original Everglades habitat remains intact. Reason number two, invasive species. These are species that get outside of their native area and then spread really aggressively. The Burmese python has been particularly problematic here in the Everglades. Let's take a trip back to the 90s, shall we? Back then, everybody had to have three things. A Tamagotchi, Beanie Babies, and a Burmese python. Like all trends, they eventually died out. Taking care of a digital pet got boring after a while, and the value of Beanie Babies crashed. Both of these things were lost either to the basements of America or to landfills. But you can't really do that with a snake that grows over 15 feet long and can weigh up to 80 pounds. Inevitably, the pythons found their way into the Everglades, either by escaping or straight up being released by their owners. Native mammals had very little defense against the snakes, so their populations have dropped, some dramatically so in recent decades. And because the Burmese python is so well camouflaged for a tropical environment, getting rid of them is very, very difficult. There's other invasive species in the Everglades as well, like the lionfish, the Australian pine, and the Brazilian pepper tree, but the Burmese python has been a real menace here. And finally, there's poaching. It's not as much of a problem here as other parts of the world, but park rangers do occasionally find visitors possessing rare plants or animals. This is very illegal as all wildlife in the Everglades is protected. Loss of habitat, increased competition and predation from invasives, and the illegal capturing and killing of wildlife have all put a ton of pressure on native species. There are currently nearly 200 animals that are on the federally endangered species list here in the Everglades. That includes the West Indian manatee, the American crocodile, the wood stork, the Everglades snail kite, and sea turtles, all of which are at risk of going extinct. The problem for endangered species only compounds as their numbers drop. When a population decreases, it loses genetic diversity, or the variety of genetic traits. High genetic diversity populations are more adaptable to changes in their environment, like the introduction of a predator or a change in the climate patterns. But if everyone has the same traits, then everyone is vulnerable to the same things. Genetic diversity won't guarantee a population won't go extinct, but it does make it more resilient. The Florida panther is a great example of what happens when a population gets too low and loses genetic diversity. By the 1980s, the number of panthers in Florida had dwindled to just a few dozen. Inbreeding had accelerated, resulting in birth defects and reduced survivability of individuals. But in 1995, a genetic restoration program was started that brought in eight panthers from Texas. This greatly increased the genetic diversity of the Florida population. The results? Today, there's almost 230 individual panthers in Florida and a healthier, more resilient population. They've got a long way to go, that's for sure, but they are much better protected against extinction today than they were even a few decades ago. So why is extinction even a problem? There's billions of species on Earth. If a few die out, what's the big deal? Think of an ecosystem like a Tower of Jenga. Take away one block and the tower will still stand, but as the game progresses, you take away more blocks and the tower gets less and less stable. It'll be harder to take out pieces without knocking it over until the inevitable happens and 
the tower collapses. And that's exactly what can happen to entire ecosystems. It's the same way in the natural world. Take away one organism that many others rely on for survival and the whole ecosystem can fall apart. So what can you do to help endangered species? Give them a home, of course. By planting native plants in your yard, you're providing a habitat for the species who need it most. Start small with some wildflowers or a couple native bushes or shrubs. You'll be providing food and habitat for insects, reptiles, amphibians, birds, and mammals. Check out wildflower.org. They've got a whole plant database that's run by the University of Texas that can tell you what native plants grow best in your state and how to best take care of them. And I bet you there's some cool organizations near you that do work in local parks planting native plants. A lot of these projects also get rid of invasive species, so it is a classic win-win-win situation. Native plants get a home, invasive species get the boot, and you get that warm, fuzzy feeling for giving the planet a little love. Now, get out there, get your hands dirty, give endangered species a home. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.